Microsoft, as of late, has not been the most transparent when it comes to their business practices. Their main aim recently has seemed to be to lock down the customer experience as much as they possibly can in order to push their Windows 10 ecosystem agenda. From collecting massive amounts of data and not being fully transparent about it, to the recent creation of Windows 10S and its lack of being able to run Win32 applications that don't come from the Windows Store, and the fact that Microsoft Edge is the default browser forever and always until the end of time. They're business practices that have made me wonder whether an alternative is possible. But with macOS requiring a Mac, or some shady work to get it working on a PC, it leaves Linux as the only viable alternative. So I wonder, is it possible for me to switch to Linux full time and leave behind the corporate agenda of Microsoft? When it comes to choosing a Linux distribution, I want to look at what the majority of software I want to use is packaged for. While I've been told it would not be hard to recompile certain apps to run on other distros, I want to avoid as much hassle as possible. For this reason, I'm passing on Red Hat Linux-based distros as the vast majority of packages are packaged for Debian-based versions of Linux. For the purpose of this video, I have chosen Ubuntu GNOME. I have chosen the GNOME flavor of Ubuntu, mainly because of Canonical's recent decision to drop their work on the Unity desktop in favor of the GNOME desktop. I've chosen Ubuntu for its wide compatibility in the vast majority of Linux packaged apps and drivers. Now it comes to the question, what do I need an operating system to do? Well. There's a lot of tasks that I do day to day that I need to make sure work perfectly. These include browse the web in Google Chrome, edit documents in Google Docs, watch movies both on Netflix and locally, listen to music on Spotify, edit videos in Premiere, create graphics in Photoshop, play Steam games, and be able to use my group chats on Discord. So how does it perform these tasks? Can it do them well? Can it entice me to switch? Let's take a look. Starting with web browsing. Google Chrome is always my browser of choice and getting the official stable release from Google is easy to do and install. I use Chrome because it syncs with all of my Google apps, which is my primary way of getting the majority of my work done. Very pleased. Editing documents with Google Docs is also not a problem since it runs in Google Chrome. No problems whatsoever there. When it comes to Netflix, Google Chrome handles the job with no problem either. However, Chrome only supports 720p Netflix streaming. I'm not complaining as watching Netflix is still a breeze, I just wish there was a native way to watch 1080p Netflix on Linux. For any other video files I have locally, I use VLC, furthering the seamless transition. Spotify actually has their own app for Debian-based Linux distros. It's not supported and you need to enter a few commands into the terminal to get it, but it works and it works really well. It's actually quite comparable to the desktop experiences of the Mac and PC. I was really impressed with this as I use Spotify a lot and not having a native app that supports their premium quality music would have been an almost instant turnoff. Now let's talk about Adobe. Adobe still does not support Linux. This is frustrating beyond belief. Editing videos on Linux is a major mixed bag. Yes, apps like OpenShot and Caden Live exist, but they don't even come close to the sheer power that Adobe Premiere gives you. I am also well aware that GIMP is quite the impressive Photoshop alternative, and if it really came down to it, I would be willing to use it. However, I am just used to Photoshop and prefer it over GIMP. That's not a knock on free software. I'm just used to certain apps and how they work. Linux gaming. Let's look at some games I frequent in my 200 plus Steam library. Grand Theft Auto 5, H1Z1, King of the Kill, Doom 2016, American Truck Simulator, and Payday 2. Out of these five games, two of them support Linux. Not supporting GTA 5 alone is enough to not make me switch, but I'll save that for later. The fact that even some of my Steam games are supported on Linux impresses me and shows how far Linux has come in just a few short years. Discord officially supports Linux, so getting it is as easy as it was getting Google Chrome. It runs just as it does on Mac and Windows, so it works without any complaints from me. So what's the verdict? If you had asked me this back in 2012 
or even 2015, I would have laughed at you. I would have thought you were stupid for even suggesting I use Linux. Why would anyone use Linux? That's an operating system for nerds who want to build their own operating system from scratch. Who on earth wants to do that? But this is 2017, and Linux as well as myself have both matured. With every revision to Linux operating systems, they come further and further being real competitors to Microsoft Windows. And with Windows 10 becoming more and more locked down with every revision, it makes Linux an even more enticing option. However, with Adobe's lack of support and the lack of Linux support with my full Steam library means that it, it falls short for me switching full time. For the time being, I will continue to use Linux in a virtualized environment so that I can monitor its growth and hopefully watch it add support for more commercial software and games. However, down the road, I would like to build a Linux workstation box to work alongside my Windows workflow. But until that time comes, I won't be switching anytime soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful or insightful. These videos take a lot of time to make, so if you enjoyed it, show your support by hitting that like button. And to stay up to date on my future projects, be sure to subscribe. Hope to see you again very soon.